Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to connect the uh, direct online starter. It's mainly used for starting small uh, motors or pumps. Uh, this is not the manual motor starter. The manual motor starter, all that does is just a start and stop. But the direct online starter has a contactor inside and an overload. So let me show you how to connect that contactor and overload. First thing we'll need is the supply. Now, this being a direct online starter, it's probably going to be three phase supply. So I've got my red, my yellow, and my blue. I'm just going to connect that to the L1, L2, and L3 of the contactor. Make sure that the contactor voltage is the same as your supply voltage. This is a 400 volt the contactor. I'm using a 400 volt three phase supply. Something that I did not mention at the start is also to connect the overload. Um, in line with the wires L1, L2 and L3. It is possible to actually move it to these three connection points but uh, it should be on the 1, 2 and the 3. Now the contactor has uh, two power points for the coil. The one is A1, the other one is A2. This contact is an A2 contact at the bottom. Some also have one at the top so it doesn't matter A2 and the A2 at the top and the bottom are bridge so it doesn't matter which one you use. So first thing I did I Put a bridge between L1 and A1. That's the first step. Next thing I'm going to do is going to run a wire from uh, my L3, the blue wire in this case, to the normally open point on my contactor. Just a bridge there. And then I'm going to bridge it from the normally open to my switch. Okay, that's the one bridge done from L3 to the normally open. I'm just going to put the other one in from the normally open. Next thing we're going to do is uh, take it from the start button down to the normally open of the contactor and down to the normally closed of the overload. Make sure it's a normally closed. Usually they have con two contacts, normally closed and normally open. Just make sure it's the normally closed, the NC contact. So I've got the one bridge from the bottom of the switch to the bottom of the normally open on the contactor. Now for the one to the normally close of the overload. Now for the normally close of the overload, it doesn't matter which side you put it on, which side you connect it, it's just a normally closed switch. So that's gonna, not going to matter. Now for the final wire, take it from the overload, the normally closed switch on the overload. To the my A2 point. Like I said, some of the contactors have another A2 point down here. Mine doesn't. And there you have it. Normally closed from the overload down to the contact underneath the A2. Yeah, and now if you connect the power, it should work. You can now continue to connect the motor to the bottom terminals here L1, L2, L3. If you do not put in these wires for the overload to switch off the contactor, the overload itself does not switch the power to the motor. So if you don't have these wires, the overload means nothing. You can just as well leave it out. So you have to connect these normally closed points so that you can uh, stop the, con uh, the contactor from switching on if there's a problem with the, with the motor. Okay, so the uh, direct line starter is connected to power. If I hit the start button, it should engage the contactor. And if I hit the stop button, should stop. Now if you test it without the lid and uh, it works perfectly and you put the lid on and it doesn't want to start or it doesn't want to stop, usually the fault is inside the lid. These pins here, they uh, either bend or you've got to bend them a certain way so they can make contact with the uh, start and the stop buttons. So just make sure of that. If you test it, it works properly, you put the lid on, it doesn't work, you know it's those little plates on the inside that doesn't make contact. Just bend them either forwards or backwards. Uh, you may ask why did I put the normally open of the uh, contactor in the line there. I'll show you if I disconnect that what, what the result is. Um, we call that a holding contact. As soon as you press start, that actually holds the start in place. If I disconnect that, I'll show you what happens. Okay, so now that I've actually taken out the normally open contact of the contactor, or the holding, as, as we said, what happens is as soon as you press the button and you release it, the contactor 
doesn't stay pulled in. So that's actually what that contact does. The normally open on the contactor. It uh, holds down the contactor when the power is still connected. Now this uh, normally open switch actually has a little trick. It slides onto the uh, contactor and engages with the contactor. You see if I push this, the little green button moves as well. So then you don't need the holding on there. If you hit the button, it stays in, so you don't need that. So just make sure if yours has that, that's a neat little feature to save some time. You can see the green button, as I push it, it stays in place where the contactor holds it. And there you go, that's how to connect the direct online starter. Thanks for watching, see you again.